Hi, kindergartners. I'm Mrs. Buck, and today I'm going to continue teaching you about Reader's Workshop. Now, Reader's Workshop is going to look a little different because we're not in the classroom, but I have a couple students here with me today who would like to show you the good ways and the not so good ways to behave during Reader's Workshop. So here's my student, Echo the Owl. Hi, Echo. Now Echo is a wise owl and Echo makes good choices. So Echo will set the good example for Reader's Workshop. Echo's gonna go and have a seat on the carpet. My other student today will be George. George, come on. George is a little crazy. <laughs> Curious George doesn't really know how to sit and listen to a book during Reader's Workshop. So George is going to show us what not to do during Reader's Workshop, and we're gonna help him behave a little better and learn how to sit and listen and share the books. So before we start today, I'd like to make a thinking map. A thinking map is a great way to get all of your thoughts down on paper and to organize them. This kind of thinking map is a circle map. Can you tell? It's a circle. It says in the middle, good readers, because that's what we're talking about today. What makes a good reader? Well, let's see what Echo and George are up to. Well, take a look at Echo. Echo is sitting in his square, his eyes are on me, and his hands are still. George, what are you doing? George is lying down. His eyes aren't on me. He's looking up at the ceiling. What does George need to do to be a better student during our reading time? I think I heard one, but one of you say he needs to sit up and listen. So I'm going to write that down on our circle map because that's a great way to be a good reader is to listen. L I S T E N spells listen. And when you show someone you're listening to them, your eyes are on them, your mouth is quiet, your hands are still, and your body is still. That shows people that you're listening. Let's draw an ear so that you guys can remember that this is the word listen. I have a little trick for you. To help you be a better listener, it's a good idea to get your body ready for listening. This is what we can do. Ready? We're going to put our hands up and we're going to roll them up, roll them up, give a little clap. Roll them up, roll them up, put them in your lap. Eyes to look and ears to listen. And now you're ready to listen. All right, the next thing that a good reader does is sit together and share a book. Let's go see if Echo and George can share a book. Look, I found Echo and George in my classroom library. What are they doing? They're sharing a book. They're sitting side by side, their bodies are very still, and their eyes are on the book. Good job, Echo and George. <laughs> George, don't take the book away. That's not sharing. I'm going to write the word share in our thinking map. Good readers listen. Good readers share. I'm going to draw a picture of two friends with a book in between them, showing that they are sharing a book. Now, the third thing that you have to do when you're listening and sharing a book is, of course, read the book, silly. <laughs> you can't read a book without reading. But you might say, Mrs. Buck, I'm only in kindergarten. I can't read. Well, you know what Echo is going to say. Echo knows that 
even babies can read because looking at pictures in books and thinking about the story makes you a reader already. Did you know that? Echo knows. So good readers do three things. They listen, they share, and they read. So that's our third word on our board. Read the book. And that means your eyes are looking and studying every page. You look at the words, you look at the pictures, and you read the book all in order. That's what a good reader does. So let's go see what George is up to at the library. Hi, George. I see you're reading a book. But wait a minute. Isn't that book upside down? The first thing you need to do when you read a book is look at it correctly. Let's flip this book around so that George can get it ready to read. There you go, George. You need to sit up now. Good job, little monkey. When you're looking at a book, you first want to look at the front cover and study it. Look at the pictures. Look at the title. This book is called Wild About Books. It's by Judy Sierra and pictures are by Mark Brown. I see lots of wild animals on this book, don't you? Even the back of this book is going to show us some pictures and give us some ideas about the story. I see more wild animals and they're reading books. Now, do we open a book like this? No, let's close that and try again. You always open a book in English with the left page opening first. This is our inside sheet. It gives us a little bit of an idea of what's gonna happen. And here's our title page. This is the book Wild About Books. And I see a van that says public library and it says bookmobile and she's driving towards the zoo. So I'm just gonna show you today how to do a picture walk to get you ready to read. And this is a way that you can start reading books at home. So before we look at the words, I'm gonna look at the pictures. I see a big building filled with wild animals and I see the bookmobile. And it looks like there's a lady there with a computer and some animals are coming out to see. Maybe she's going to sell some books or rent some books to these animals. We're going to turn the very next page the same way. Now we get a close up of these animals and look at their eyes. It looks like they're maybe surprised, confused. They see this lady on a chair reading a book. I don't think they know what she's doing. I'm going to turn to the next page and keep looking at the pictures. Wow, all the animals are running towards something and they look excited, don't they? Let's turn the page and see what happens next. Oh my goodness, they're all crowding around the bookmobile and they all have books in their hands and their mouths. They're looking at them and they look excited. Let's turn the page and keep reading the pictures. Oh, two giraffes are reading books. Is that a some sort of animal down in the water? Maybe an otter, maybe a beaver. <laughs> These crocodiles are sharing a book. Looking at the pictures, the panda bear. I didn't know bears and animals were so excited about books. Kangaroos reading, raccoons are reading. What are those back there? Maybe baboons? I'm not sure. I'll bet when we read the story, we'll find out. Look at this animal laughing. Oh, I'll bet it's a laughing hyena. There's a snake and it looks like they're enjoying this book, doesn't it? Let's turn the page and keep looking at the pictures. 
there's more animals and now it's nighttime. This animal has built a house out of books and all the other animals are looking at him. Oh, there's an owl in the tree, just like Echo. So here comes the lady. I wonder if she's getting her books back or maybe she's giving the kid, giving the animals more books. There's ants building a hill, some little rabbits. They still have books, don't they? Oh, there's bears on this page. Looks like they're reading. On this page, I see penguins, maybe a porcupine, a big snake, and it's morning time, it looks like. The sun is rising and they're still reading. Walking stick, a dung beetle. I'm just reading the labels right now. There's a millipede and a giant hissing cockroach. So even the insects are reading. And now I see a leopard. He doesn't look too happy, does he? Maybe it's a cheetah. He has a note in his hand. This hippopotamus looks happy though with a book. And now it looks like the zoo brary. What on earth? <gasps> Maybe the animals start their own library. I wonder if that's what's happening. The lady is saying hip hip hooray. She's got her books in her hand. She's excited about something. Now they have balloons like a celebration and the animals all have books. And that's the end of this story. So even though we didn't actually read this whole book by reading the words, we were reading by looking at the pictures. Readers think about what they're reading. And if you were thinking about the story, then you were being a reader. And remember, to be a good reader, all you need to do is listen, share, and read. Let's check in on my students and see how they're doing. Echo, George, did you guys enjoy the story today? Look at how nicely they're sitting. Their eyes are on me, their hands are still, their bodies are still, and their mouths are quiet. You guys did an excellent job today. Listening, sharing, and reading. Good job, George and Echo.